Good day, brethren. You are welcome to RCCG New Covenant Parish's Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father and the Lord, the General Vassier of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. Adeboye. And I pray that as you join me today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, 2nd March 2024, we'll be looking at the topic, Your Right Hand Man, Part 1. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 12. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and all stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. A Bible text is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 4 from verses 10 to 16. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither Hear to for, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who make it the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? I have not I the Lord. Now therefore go, and I will be with your with your mouth. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron delivered thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak with him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what he shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even... He shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. A passage says, For everyone who becomes great, there is always at least one person God provides to be his or her right hand man. For example, in Exodus 4, 10-16, when Moses told God that he could not go to Egypt because he couldn't speak well, God appointed Aaron to assist him. In Exodus 17, 8-13, when the Amalekites came to attack Israel, Moses went to the mountain top with Aaron and Or, and told Joshua to lead the army in the valley below. Moses lifted up his hands, and Israel prevailed. But when his hands got tired, Aaron and Or gave him a rock to sit on, and held up his hands. In the meantime, Joshua was in the valley below fighting. All these people were right-hand men to Moses. So we have been made to understand that. If you want to get to a great position in life, typically when God takes you up, he appoints people as your right-hand men, as assistants for you. People that will help you, that will give you um, some support so that you can accomplish that which God wants to, you to accomplish. Moses was not a good talker. He had a slow tongue, probably was a stammerer. And so God gave him Aaron, his brother, who could speak very well to be his assistant. So Moses will speak to Aaron and then Aaron will speak to the people. And when Moses went to, you know, when Israel was at war with the Amalekites, Joshua was helping him fight in the valley below because Moses was not skilled in battle and Aaron and all were holding up his hands to ensure that Israel had victory. So God will typically give you people a support system to help you stay at the top. We find another example in Genesis 24. Abraham called his lead servant and asked him to get a wife for his son amongst his people. That lead servant was Abraham's right-hand man in this case. I should, however, also note that the term is genderless, as a woman can also be a right-hand man to another woman. The right-hand man is someone who is close enough to his or her leader to know what the latter needs at every moment and be proactive about providing it. So another example was um, Abraham who when he needed a son for his wife, he sent his servant to get his, a wife uh, for his son. And so we could see that that servant was standing in the place of his support, assistance to Abraham. And we have been told that this term is genderless. The right-hand man term is genderless. So a woman could also be, an, could also be assisting another woman. It, it does not matter whichever gender. It's just God using a person to create a support system for you to get to the top or stay at the top. And we have been told that the right-hand man at every moment is proactive and knows what the leader or the person that is supposed to assist needs at every time and provides that assistance. 
You should also identify your right-hand man if you haven't. Your right-hand man can say what you cannot say yourself or might have a way of presenting the matter that will effectively pass on your intended message. He or she can be the lifter of your hands, the one who will help you when your hands go weary. Such a person is the one who can provide you with something to sit upon when you are tired. Someone who can make you comfortable even at, at his or her own discomfort. Like Joshua, he or she is the one who can fight your battles even when you are not there. So we are being told that each and every one of us should identify our right-hand man. We should identify that support system. We should identify that person that can help us. When we are tired, to give us a stone to sit on. When we, you know, that can someone that can fight for us when we are not there, someone that can speak on our behalf, someone that can convey our message the way it was intended to be conveyed. We all need helpers. We all need a right hand man. We all need assistance. So let us look for that person that God has ordained to be our right hand man. Your real right hand man is one who, despite your closeness, will never take you for granted because of familiarity. Your right-hand man is one who will see your weaknesses and will not use them against you or go around telling others about them. He or she will rather cover them as Aaron and all did for Moses. Your right-hand man is one to whom you can entrust things and be sure that they will do it as you want it done. Note that God may have, may have you serve as a right-hand man to someone as well. So we are being made to understand that a right-hand person is someone who provides support for you under no circumstances. That person will know when you are weak and cover your weakness. That person will know where you are deficient and cover your deficiencies. And so we need to identify a right-hand man. And lastly, we are being told that you yourself could be a right-hand man to someone else. Someone could be a right-hand man to you and you could be a right-hand man to someone else. So you should also identify the person that you are supposed to be assisting covering their weaknesses and holding up while also identifying those people around you that God has placed around you to be your own support system. And I pray that God will reveal this information to us in Jesus' name. The action point says, pray that God should connect you to the right-hand man he has prepared for you and also thank him specially for adding another year to the year of our Father in the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we want to say thank you for your word that has come to us today. We ask, Lord, that you connect us to our right-hand men and women. And we also ask that you connect us to those that we are supposed to help and assist in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be around and to connect with those who will take us to the top and maintain us there in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we pray for our Father and the Lord that you continue to increase him and prosper him and bless him in all that he does in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.